Welcome to Made for Mondays, the source for digging a little deeper into the Believer's Church Sunday messages and finding ways to apply them to our daily lives. Together, let's take a deeper look and find a way to bring Mondays back Hey everybody, to life. welcome to the pod. My name is Heather, and who are you, fellas? Hey there, Edder. It's me, Jamie. <laughs> Oh, am I number two? I guess Heather's hosting. We didn't know. Right, yeah, no. I'm, I feel so weird not having the headphones on. It's Thank like, you. My head feels so like yeah. You don't know what to do. Free. I don't know what to do. But this is good. Yeah. My name's Doug. Can you guys hear me? So like, I don't is know. This in a normal conversation, do you wear headphones all the time? <laughs> <laughs> he actually does wear well, headphones. No, I have a lot. My AirPods, yeah, yeah, AirPods are always yeah. yeah they're yeah, always kind of. I'm I'm part cyborg. I have like these <laughs> AirPods in at all times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Samuel is here today. Hi, Samuel. My biblical name for Holy Week. Oh, nice. Oh, that's really oh, good. Oh, that's good. Oh, What's my you. biblical name for Holy Douglas. Week? Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they called me in Nicaragua. Yeah. Douglas. One of the mm-hmm. one of the disciples, Douglas. Yeah. And that's also why I call her Etter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because uh-huh. that's what they call her in Nicaragua. <laughs> oh, I think that's where, uh-huh. that's, yeah, that's where Douglas started. Was, yeah, yeah. So uh-huh. I told Nicaragua. him my name like the first year and Doug. I guess yeah. in Spanish is really hard to say because the two vowels are so close together. Doug. Yeah, Doug. <clears throat> and I said, Doug. And they all started running around waving their yeah. hands like a tail. Uh-huh. And they were saying, the, the perro, uh-huh. el perro. And I was like, no, not the dog. No, it's not dog. It's, it's Doug. The dog. And I was like, no, just, yeah. That's Doug. cool, Nick. Yeah. Douglas. It's not uh, a bad nickname. So I was like, does Douglas. And they could, yeah. Okay, yeah. I got that. That's uh, good. Yeah, yeah. That happened with Jamie, my wife, too. There's no Jamie in Spanish. Do you know that? Jaime. 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 Yeah, but they don't really. Yeah. But not for girls. Yeah, for girls, it was like uh-huh. no good. So they were like, we're just going to call you something else yeah. <laughs> just made a yeah. name for her. uh-huh yeah why not yeah it does feel quiet in here today without my headphones <laughs> more than yeah. more than usual I'm so used to hear like again. very loud voices everywhere well right? i think because last i was sound. on there was so much construction going on there was a lot going yeah on so maybe it just yeah. feels like yeah. mm-hmm. it's like the quiet room yeah well we had rochelle in here too and oh she, yeah she feels that's true yeah yeah, yeah. Very all of her impressions and yes. everything uh-huh <laughs> right yeah. so jamie you said there's not a script this week. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, no, <laughs> I just thought I got canned again. Yeah, yeah uh, no script because uh, last week Heather was out, and we mm-hmm. can talk about that yeah. in yeah. just a moment. Um, I was trying to write a message, uh, which I did not finish, for the third week of our series. Yeah, not this week's message. Easter. Yeah, You're Easter good with that. has been written. Uh, but I'm halfway done with that message. so that I really didn't even complete my job last week. Um, so I'm sure they're going to dock my pay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I was a little worried about that. You'll hear from the elders. And then, yeah, I'll hear from the, I have an elders meeting tonight. So oh, I'm sure they're going to call you know. me out tonight. Just filibuster. Just like take them all the time. Talk about, read the phone book. So I didn't quite get a message yeah. written, but it was because I had a lot of things going on in my personal life. So my uncle, my 98-year-old uncle, who I love dearly. Uncle Eddie. Uh, uncle Eddie is moving to Florida <laughs> to move in with his daughter, which is a really great move for him. Um, but in the process, um, they, I need to vacate his apartment. So I had things going on with the apartment and getting with my cousin and my uncle. And then I sold my car. My old Buick is uh, gone. Do we need to have a moment of silence? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. You see how quiet it is? Yeah, it got really quiet. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, the audio podcast listeners Yeah, so the 98 so Buick, Buick is gone. It was very sad. Um, but I got his Toyota Camry. So um, I had to go to DMV twice last week, which is an experience in and yeah, of itself. Yeah, I was there too. Uh, nice. Made an appointment. Did you yes, make an appointment? Yes, I did, yeah. yeah that's the oh, I one of the few great things that came out of the pandemic, no? Yeah, it actually oh, okay. is. Yeah, yeah. It is awesome. Yeah, so if you do I, I got right my way. appointment, and I was in and out the one time to register <laughs> that car in about 15 minutes, but then I had to go back to turn in my plates and uh, on the Buick, and I was in a long line. I didn't make an appointment for that. And then I checked to see if you can do that online. And you can. Yeah. So then I went over to the city treasurer's office and got my car <laughs> off the tax roll. And that was a whole thing. And yeah. Oh, so DMV. anyway, my my week last week, I, I just was going in 20 directions. And so I did not get around to usually when Heather's out, I do the script for the pod. And That's all right. So I figured we're Easter's veterans. coming, yeah, we got this. Yes. prayer event, Good Friday, yeah. great message to oh, digest. You. Oh, did we yeah. just what, what, It would oh, be nice. easy <laughs> to, to fill yeah. our time. Um, I and have it be. I was at the DMV this week as well. Yes. So Addison, my 15 year old uh-huh. daughter, 15 and a half now, got her driver's permit. Unreal. Yeah, I can't crazy. Believe it. Yeah. Can't she believe it. She went. 
tearing down my street. Her second birthday was her first, our first Sunday of Believers was her second birthday, yes. which yes. is crazy. It's yep. so um, crazy. So her appointment, so I had the flu bug a couple weeks ago. Yes. And it like, this is how I know I'm getting older. I, Emma Light recovered, Emma, my youngest recovered in like 13 hours. Uh-huh. Me, I was down for like 17 days. <laughs> 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 so yeah. I was like just starting to get back over yeah. it. And it was Monday and she was supposed to go take her written test. Jamie's not back in from out where she's working. So I was like, all right, I'll take her over there. It's 15 minutes before her appointment that was set. Yeah. We did all that. How great is that? So we walk in. Addie's Addie's biggest concern was fixing all of her hair and makeup because well she's going to get oh, a picture yeah. taken correct and that picture matters it, it sticks does. with you for yes. a long time it is true it we does were just matter. talking about a long time. your DMV photos kind of a, oh, yeah. yeah it's a I've big had commitment mine yeah. since I was like probably like yeah early twenties I right. think I had to yeah. Yeah. get it updated so yeah. I I respect Addie's yeah concern well, here I think what it should have been just second would be having anything prepared for what to take to the DMV. Well, that, that, I mean, isn't that the parent's job? Oh, you would have thought. <laughs> so Jamie made the appointment. It was great. Uh-huh. I texted Jamie. This is 15 minutes before her appointment. I was like, hey, where's all of her stuff? And Jamie's like, I didn't think you needed to take anything. Oh. Jamie, when have you ever been to the DMV and just went in empty handed and everything was great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they just were like, no, oh, usually, we're so glad you're usually here. Usually you go with yeah. all of your papers and you, yeah, and you, you are still missing, don't have you're anything. still missing something. So it was yeah. a great learning experience for Addy. I just said, listen, never, ever, ever go to the DMV. Empty handed. Empty handed. So ever, her very first life. experience at the DMV was a, a learning lesson. experience. Yeah, it's not yeah. over. So I got all this stuff together in 15 minutes. I was crushing it. I had social security card, everything. I mean, yeah. Addie's got her ID. I've got two forms of address, all yep. this stuff. Yep. We go up there and we can. you can scan now. You scan to check yeah. in, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. great. I scan it. You have to scan with the number that made the appointment. Uh, Jamie's number. Which is Jamie 40 minutes away. Uh, oh, no. So I send her a picture of the QR code. Oh, she no. Can't, she can't figure it out. She can't figure this thing out. <laughs> I'm not feeling great. Addie, I want her to be able to get her license. Are you grumpy at this point? I'm a little grumpy. <laughs> I'm a little That's grumpy. That's the best question. <laughs> yeah. And I, I later apologized to my wife. Uh-huh. And this is going to make you sound like a jerk, but we're messy people. I hung up on her twice. <laughs> Samuel <laughs> Waitman Hager. You hung up on her <laughs> twice? I was so mad. <laughs> This the security guard at the DMV is trying to help me, <laughs> and I'm like, sir, I listen. Uh, man. I'm not trying to be arrogant here, but I'm pretty sure I know technology better than you. Okay, uh, I didn't oh, say that to him. That's good. <laughs> but I'm in my heart, did. that's what I was thinking. Uh-huh. But he was being very nice, so he was trying to help me. Oh, just send your wife this. I send Jamie that. Two minutes later, he comes back. He's like, "Did you hear back from your wife?" And I said, "Are you married?" And he said, "Okay, I know the answer." Then I was like, "Yeah, of course, I haven't heard back." So all that to be said, uh-huh. we didn't get an appointment that day. Oh, you didn't? No. So Addie was a little little frustrated. I mean, dreams I pull crushed. back into the driveway of our house, and Jamie sends me a picture of our number, our number for the DMV now. Your number is K100. And I was like, this does not help me now. I'm back at house. <laughs> so anyways, we scheduled a couple days later. She passed. Only missed one question. Good for her. Yeah, and I have another driving story, but we can, <laughs> well, that that yeah. might, be, might be another Maybe time. Maybe another time. Yeah, yeah but it was oh my the goodness. DMV itself. Yeah, it has made it easier with the sign-ins. It's made it so much easier. But you yeah. still you can't go in empty-handed. No, no, and you can't go in willy-nilly either. Like, no. no, whoever's <laughs> making the appointment's got to show up. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, did you hear that, Jamie? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Well, lesson learned. Hopefully she doesn't listen And what a public service to those listening to the podcast today. (laughs) Yep. You know? The appointment, make an appointment. Yeah. If you make an appointment, show up for your appointment. Because we did that. We did it Wednesday morning, 8 a.m. Don't send your spouse. No. Definitely don't do that. Terrible idea. Terrible idea. Yeah. Or just communicate. Yeah. Yeah. I think the the true winner of the story is that security guard. Yeah. (laughs) He seems like he's the guy that came out on top. He was pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But he didn't. Yeah, he was awesome. Uh, What's that one passage? Sometimes we interact with angels in disguise or whatever. Oh, you think that was an angel? In the arms of (laughs) the angel. (laughs) Uh, This this is when you need headphones. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Yeah, Uh, Oh man. Anyways, that's that's pretty much what I did all week last week. Yeah. How was your week, Doug? Oh, it was so much better than that. 
Really? Yeah, yeah, no. Um, so I started reading a uh, book oh, series gosh. called Mistborn, and it's very good. Mistborn. Is it Mistborn. Jason Bourne's wife? It is. No, it's not. Oh. Right. So it's like a fantasy series. Uh, my good friend Jason Spencer told me about it, and this he's been telling me about it for big years. Book that you no, I can't yesterday. wait for that one too. <laughs> it's gonna be so much fun. <laughs> that was awesome. No, it's a different book series, but um, I started reading it, and it was just amazing. So I, I like burned through the first book really, really quick, and started the second one. So like my free time on Friday was like a lot of reading and just like rest. And then yesterday I was reading a little bit after we got back from the um, the Easter challenge and all yeah. that. It was really cool. Yeah. So. Just kind of chill weekend, nothing real crazy. Just a lot of reading and hanging out with family and all that. Yeah. Yesterday, Doug was given a book about Bigfoot. Oh, yeah. And on the cover, it says, updated <laughs> with all of the latest research oh, and yeah. findings. And I was like, wow. Interesting. I'm very <laughs> yeah. excited about the book. Oh, you read I haven't it yet? started it yet. It's I'm, pretty thick, too. It I is. Mean, it's, it's a not solid a small book. book. So there's a lot of information about Bigfoot. Yeah. My I, my mom and myself are, are big believe, fans. Do you believe I, there's Bigfoot? I think deep down I do. I'm still trying to. <laughs> do you want to believe? I do. I really want to. Deep yeah, down. I do. So we're both big fans of Bigfoot. Yeah. She's of course she's a way bigger fan. She got me into it. My um, brother-in-law is convinced he saw Bigfoot one day. Really? Yeah. You know my brother-in-law. Yeah. Eric? Yeah. That's was how Bigfoot. Yes. Was he like camping or was just like getting the trash in the front yard? The yeah. there Definitely is. not. Uh, I would <laughs> love it. Can you... Can you get more details on that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that'd be great. Sure. That'd be great. <laughs> but of all the animals and, and things that are conspiracies, mm -hmm. I think Bigfoot probably is the one that's the most, like, it could potentially oh, yeah. be real. I agree. I think that's the one that's way more likely. Yeah. What's what's oh, the most man. unlikely on that You're spectrum? <laughs> if Bigfoot, oh, if Bigfoot is the most likely. <laughs> the most unlikely. What's the most <laughs> unlikely? Know, so well, it's now aliens because the government said they're real. Yeah. So now they're definitely not real. Okay. Oh, so no. You, the government has since come out and said that there was, JK? there was no, yeah, there was no evidence. They went through all of the archives and there is no evidence of, of anything. Oh yeah. Okay. Now, I, be closed, well, now I believe in aliens. Wait, again. is that yeah. what the updates were in that book? <laughs> no, that was Bigfoot. This yeah, yeah. Was aliens. This oh, aliens. Yeah. yeah. Government's yeah. not yeah. really interested in Bigfoot. I think they're the not Loch Ness. talking about them. The Loch Ness. Cause Seems I guess like, over there, yeah. it's a, it's a very small yeah. body of water. There's I no way yeah. they would you could have searched that whole thing. I a hundred percent. So that one's probably, yeah, that one's locked down. <laughs> nice. That was good. All right, Heather, what did you do last week? <laughs> last week. Now that I'm hosting, yeah. I, yeah, I right. feel responsible. Well, <laughs> you pull up some questions. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, hold <laughs> AI, write questions for me. Yeah. <laughs> Let me pull out the questions. You, here. For, you didn't get to the script, but you're still, you still have to host. Oh, well, then I should be in your seat. <laughs> that's why I was confused at yeah. the beginning. Yeah, Heather, yeah, welcome to everybody. It's all good. I got this. I'm good um, on the fly. No big deal. Yeah. yeah. No big deal. I was at Windshape last week, Windshape. Uh, which is a a retreat center mm -hmm. in Rome, Georgia. Oh, wow. And it is amazing. If you ever have the opportunity to go there, um, you can go to the Windshape, is it marriageretreat.org? Or just Windshape I think retreats. if you just Google Windshape Retreats, you will find yeah. all kinds win? of Is it win? Like, all I do is like win. winners. Yeah, or win, 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 no matter what. Shape. Okay, gotcha. Yes. Oh, okay. Win, They shape, shape winners. Yeah. That's Love kind that. of their yeah. thing. I was like, I thought not it was wind. 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 No, no. They don't wind. shape the wind. wind. What is the shape of wind? Yeah. <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> Windshape.org. <laughs> yep. Um, But we were afforded the opportunity to go there for a marriage retreat and it was wonderful for ministry leaders for ministry leaders so that's that makes mm -hmm. it kind of cool yeah and so yeah it was awesome just nate and me and there were probably oh nate had to go yeah <laughs> um like a hundred and some mm -hmm. maybe a hundred people there yep um so yeah it was very relaxing there's a very like loose agenda yep. of things that you can participate in if but you want required. to, but nothing is required. You Love eat that. like kings and queens. Yeah, the like, food is amazing, incredible. So you finish breakfast and you're so full, and yeah. then by the time you're thinking like, man, I'm still so full, it's time for lunch. It's time for lunch, <laughs> yeah. and you're like, I I don't need lunch. But like, then you go and but it's you amazing. go and you're like, I have to eat this food yeah, because it's so, so good. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just awesome. But we got to meet. They have small group times in the evening evenings, and I have to say, I don't want to give too much of this away because I'm probably going to end up using some of it for a yeah. message that I have coming up. But um, I did not want to participate in small group yeah. because I thought it was going to be really lame. Sure. 
And I even told Nate on the first Nate night. Don't, and, don't you remember me saying <laughs> I didn't want to participate yeah. in my small group and it yes. ended up being the highlight of my yeah. week? Yeah. But I still did not. <laughs> I also change, did that not. That did not change your yeah. course. No. Story of my life. I, t- I say yeah. things. No one listens. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so the same thing. And I was like, we're not doing this. And mm-hmm. Nate was like, we have to at least say hello to these people. They're they're going to be standing out of this room when we leave. We have to say hello. And I was like, all right. So anyway, it truly was yeah. one of the highlights of our week and yep. just made some really great friends and it was lovely. Yep. So that and was really fun. They were f- people from all over? All over, yeah. Um, some were from Florida, some were from Colorado. Yep. Yeah, it was great. We got to do a high ropes course. Oh, yes. nice. so super fun. Yep. Um, we got to, we did a taste and see event where one of the chefs from that provided us this lovely food all week did a whole like cooking demonstration that was really great um yeah just very relaxing week it was great and it's beautiful there beautiful in the mountains of georgia yep um yeah and then on the way back we got to see my sister and her family and my mom for a little bit went to one of our favorite restaurants in greenville and then yesterday you guys got to see I was completely surprised that Trey Boy came home. Yeah, right. He's home for the week. He and Spencer had been cooking this surprise yep. up for quite a while. Had no idea. Yeah, I bumped into him in the hall backstage. Yep. And uh, was I was also very surprised. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it was very good to yeah, see him. So I don't know. I think he got taller. I, I don't know, know if that's Everyone possible. Is, weird, but I was his like, hair is taller. Going on? That yeah. might be yeah, it. Yeah. 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 Everyone always... he's laughs because everyone always thinks that i think it's just because he's gone for a while and comes back but yeah so he's home yeah and then my other big news nate said you need to say this on the podcast but i am officially done with my school i turned in my last paper last night so so what is is your degree um biblical studies nice all done So Mm -hmm. bachelor's, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, So bachelor's in biblical studies, and Heather's been working full-time and nearly going to school full-time for the last at least couple years, Mm -hmm. right? It was Mm -hmm. a couple years. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's crazy. That's Um, awesome. So yeah, got a couple little loose ends to tidy up, and then you're all done done, and then... um, she will be working towards ordination in the fall. Awesome. So yeah. that's very incredible. excited. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's very cool. Quite an quite an accomplishment. Yes. Quite an achievement. Congratulations. Thank you. Yep. That's really great. Very cool. And um I know it hasn't always been an easy journey. Yeah. Um, but you plowed through and you did it. Yeah. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. We are too. <laughs> Such Thank good you. stuff. Yep. Um it's not as great of an accomplishment, but I also went to an oyster fest. It was all you can eat this weekend. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. And I ate a lot. So and I ate a lot. I kind of understand the accomplishment you're feeling. Oh, uh, yeah. Right? Yeah, I see, what you, I see the connection now. Yeah. yeah. We both worked hard for something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And completed our goal. Very, very, <laughs> very similar. similar. Yeah. Very similar. Very similar. Uh, so um, the ordination Set your calendars. It's set for September the 7th. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. That's awesome. So um, you guys need to set it on your yeah. calendar. Yeah. I'll s- send something out to... I'm already thinking of questions. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, that's exciting. Um, yeah, very good stuff. So yesterday, um, Douglas, Douglas. Hey, Douglas. One of my favorite passages... I say that about a lot of passages, but yeah. I love Luke 15. Uh, when we were raising support to go to France, that was one of the passages that I taught on over and over and over and over and over again over that course of seven years. I could still teach that message from oh, yeah. memory. <laughs> That's awesome, isn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, I just love that passage so very much, and you did such a good job with it. Um, so can you tell us, like, based on... The topic that we had, mm-hmm. which was um, basically praying for the lost, um, what what drew you to that passage? What what because you could have gone anywhere. Yeah, you weren't yeah. tied to a passage. What what made you choose that? Yeah, so the the book, the praying like monks, living like fools. He was talking through a totally different passage. I think it was Elijah praying um, <laughs> yeah. for um, when he was praying, praying for uh, rain, for rain. Yeah. yeah, and the whole idea was like. 
we tend to focus on the fire falling down from the sky and burning up the offering, even though it was like doused in water and all that. Like yeah. amazing event. But he was praying for rain so that the city could come come alive, so that they could find um, nourishment and the drought and all that would be over. Yeah. So, um, and the whole idea was like praying like that. It takes time. It's not always glamorous. And usually it's overlooked. Like we tend to focus on like the really high energy worship experiences and we neglect the like consistent. The, and, and the miraculous, spectacular yeah, results of prayer. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And we miss out on like the longstanding, consistent. Yeah. Um, sometimes we don't see the results kind yeah. of prayers that lead to like the city actually um, coming alive in that sense. Yeah. I was really like inspired by that. But I didn't. I really didn't want to use that passage because yeah. it would it would have taken like a lot longer to unpack everything. For sure, that could have been a series, maybe. Yeah. But to do all that in one message, I think would have just been like so fast paced. Stephen Furtick could have done it. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I need to lift more weights. Come on, Dad. I could have. <laughs> um, so I I was thinking though, I was like, man, like there are a ton. Like Jesus has a heart for the lost, all, yeah. and you see it throughout all the gospels. He's always um, like the advocate for the one who's overlooked and the one who is usually gone unnoticed. So I was reading through it and just thinking, and my mind just kept going back to the lost coin. Like, and I think that's where it started. I wanted to teach on the lost coin and the woman sweeping the house looking for that one coin because it mattered to her so much. And if that coin matters to her, then how much more does do we matter to God yep. if we are far from him? Yep. Um, and I started with that and it just kind of branched out from there. And then yep. I was like, Why well, I have to use the prodigal son because it's so yep. relatable and it connects more so to like the family and the relationship. Yep. And I started and then just moved into that. So yeah. that's why I used all three parables instead yeah, of just I, I hitting the one. I think it's hard to just use one of them. Yeah, right? yeah. Because they're all tied to do, together. They're so, so important together. Yeah. yeah. Um, some commentators call those three parables together the parables of the Father's heart. Oh, mm-hmm. that's really cool. Mm-hmm. The, the whole purpose of that passage is to reveal God's heart for, for those things that are lost. And that was yeah. one of my... Uh, Favorite parts of that message, um, you did such a good job of just creating, like when I taught through that passage, however many times I taught through it, you did a much better job of of the single thing that that we long for. Like we all love to find something that's, mm-hmm. yes. that's lost. Yeah. And I just thought you did such a good job with that. And I really wanted to ask you when you were teaching yesterday... Did you really just pocket the twenty bucks and not tell anyone uh, in your family? I, I can't remember. Or did it was you so embellish the story? <laughs> uh, I probably embellished a bit for the sake of humor. Um, but <laughs> because it was a long that does not time seem ago. like a Doug thing to do. Oh no, yeah, because like yeah, I, I remember, remember a long time ago, I found the money and it was like a it was substantial. It was like a twenty dollar bill, I yeah. think. And mm-hmm. um, I think I did end up telling everybody like I found a twenty, and then there was the tension where like I think that might be mine. I was like, but I found it; it's kind of <laughs> mine now. And well, was I was yours. the one doing the laundry. I was doing the chores. Yeah. So there was probably. A period where I was like, I'm not going to tell anybody. And then eventually it came out. And yeah. Yeah. Cause we've reached a place in our family where you can't leave cash laying around. <laughs> uh, I mean, Emma, our youngest is notorious about just taking cash. Really? If she sees it, she thinks it's hers. Yeah. So we hide, I hide, if I do have cash, I hide it. That's so funny. She's just like searching the house. Oh yeah. She's yeah, sweeping yeah, the floors looking for that. that yeah, just like the parable. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Just like it. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so one of the questions in our talk about it questions was share about a time when you lost something important to you and what feelings did you experience when you were looking for it? And you told the story yeah. of ransom. Yes. <laughs> we, we, so we thought we lost ransom one night. It was crazy. Doesn't every parent lose a kid at some point? I, yeah, I hope so. And I hope yeah. it's not just me because yeah, <laughs> that's kind of a feeling frustrating. But yeah, it was it was stressful, man. Like I remember um, I had to talk to Rachel because like my recollection of the story wasn't like 100% right. So I talked with her and she was like, yeah, no, he was actually underneath Ellie's bed. Yeah, because when you first read it, he was in the closet. Yeah, mm-hmm. for some yeah. reason, I remember finding him like underneath blankets. And yeah. I think I think there have been other times where he went missing and he was just like in random places. <laughs> I think I merged stories together in my mind. But I talked with Rachel. She was like, yeah, no, it, he was underneath Ellie's bed. We couldn't find him. And we were both like panicked, like yeah. not even kidding. Like she was about to call the cops. We we can't find him. Look at how weird is that? He was in bed and now he's not. And we searched yeah. everywhere and there's no explanation. Um, we looked everywhere we could think of and he was just wasn't there. Yeah. So our minds started like racing to the worst possible scenario. Yeah. He either wandered out of the house and we didn't see him or somebody got him. And that's really scary to start thinking like, wait a second, is this a possibility? Like, did this is this actually happening right now? So just panics, not knowing what to do. And I'm so glad Rachel checked underneath. The, if the police would have showed up and they found him underneath the bed, yeah. it would have been such an embarrassing moment. But we would have been like very happy at the same oh, sure, time. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, that was, that was such a wild story. Yeah. Uh, anyone else have a story of when you lost something and what you went through when you were trying to find it? Try to think of that. I was thinking we had, it's probably related a little bit, but we had a Husky and she used to, if she would get out, she would run. And I can remember, I mean, she would get lost all Mm -hmm. the time. Even to the point where all at Jamie had to do when she walked back in to be like, like she could like make a sound like, ugh, and I would know, oh, Mocha's out. <laughs> and you would just have to chase her everywhere. And she would go through ponds. She would go through like one time in the, the biggest one, I thought we lost her for a while. And we had, we were living in apartments in Ohio and behind it was a driving range. And I finally looked back and you could walk up to the net and I saw my dog running back oh, and forth no. on the driving range. Uh, and golf no balls way. just like flying. <laughs> so I think like, but we we loved her so much. We were like, oh, we can like that that feeling of loss. Uh, I was what I was thinking when I thought about like, something that I've lost. Yeah, just how did you get her off the driving range? <laughs> oh, I I don't know how we would ever. You had to trap her. Oh yeah, yeah. So she got back around, yeah. and usually it would end up like she would run in between a house, and like the fence would finally. It would be blocked in. That's the only oh way to. Gosh. That was wild. the only way to catch her. Yeah. yeah, she just loved being home with you guys, huh? Yeah, but we ended up <laughs> we ended up figuring out that uh, if you just left the gate open, she would ultimately end up coming back. Because uh-huh. finally, I was like, I'm not chasing her anymore. I had it, and she just ended up back in the <laughs> in the backyard. Nice. So, <laughs> so apparently, huskies do that a lot. Yes. Like our neighbor yeah. has a husky, and yeah, it they, was it's always gets out of well. It's weird. Well. I can't believe it. It's like they're built for something yeah. else. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> just running around, not being a pet. Yeah. When my dad was in seminary, the second year that he was in seminary, we lived in a um, house kind of out in the country, and we lived in the house and like took care of it for the owners, and we also took care of their horses, and mm. then got to live in the house for free or like next to nothing basically. But one of the horses would jump the fence all the time and would like go and we'd get a call from one of the other farms and they'd be like, Cody's at the, at our farm. You have to come get her. (laughs) And so we would go do that. Well, one time she ended up like way down, like far from the, our house. And so we decided to We'd have to take another horse, like ride another horse over to get her. And so my dad was going to ride Is this her... before cars? No, but <laughs> my dad was going to ride her back and a friend of his was going to ride this other horse. And then my mom was going to drive our car and my brother and I were going to sit in the back of the car. We had a Subaru with like a hatchback and yep. hold the hatch open and have a bucket of feed to like try to get her to come back. <laughs> So my mom grew up on a farm. Like, so she, like, this was, like, not a big deal to her. And my brother and I loved, like, being with the horses and stuff, so that was not a big deal. My dad grew up in New Jersey. Like, he was a city (laughs) boy. So this was not his thing. And um, so, but his buddy also, like, rode horses and stuff. So he's going to ride this other horse. His name, the other horse's name is Blackjack. But so my dad and this guy go (laughs) to get this horse. And so we get out to this farm and we're driving back and she starts out great. She's following along. My brother and I, we're like little. I'm like in fifth grade, maybe. So Jonathan's like in second or third grade. My mom's driving the car and Blackjack and Cody are just trotting along. They're like following the feed. And I don't know what happened, but she got spooked or something. And my dad, she takes off down into ditches. And I mean, she is like (laughs) running. And And my dad's just holding on. on, (laughs) Like doesn't know what to do with himself. And Jonathan and I are giggling. My mom is laughing. And we're trying to like keep pace and my dad's friend is like going after them trying to get her to slow down and it is like a memory that is burned in my brain just watching my dad go we finally got her back to the house but that is a good lost story that that i will never forget (laughs) getting our horse back to the farm yeah yeah, so like the the whole theme is this obsessive search for mm-hmm. the, yeah. the thing that, <clears throat> that gets lost. Um, so the very first one is the sheep, mm-hmm. right? 
Um, second one is uh, the coin. Um, and when I taught that message, one of the things that I talked about was something that we miss out on, I think, is just the both times Jesus says um, the celebration that takes place mm-hmm. over the finding of the sheep, the finding of the coin um, is there's this great jubilation and great celebration and there's more joy in heaven mm-hmm. over one sinner who turns to faith than over 99 who you know didn't need to. Yeah. And just this contrast of like does – what gives joy to the heart of the Father give joy to us. Mm. And um, you can measure how in sync you are with the Father by what brings you joy. And, um, yeah, as you went through that passage and then you moved to the lost son, um, as, you're, as you were going through that, like how, do you, how did you think through, like, the tension between... Um, you know, what's bringing joy to the father versus the, what turns out the older brother Mm -hmm. in the, in the last parable, um, who's missing out on the, the father. Like as you were reading through that, what, what kind of stood out to you in that? Yeah. So I love the first two because like the first two just show the celebration. Yeah. Like she found the coin, the guy found the sheep and there's really no, there's no other side to that. There's no person who's upset that she found the coin. And there's no right, person who's right, upset that he found the sheep. So true. The it, first two are only like celebratory. Yep. And the third one hits you because the third one shows the other side of it. The contrast. <laughs> this this person is not excited. Like yeah. he's not even willing to go inside the house and celebrate. It would be like in the other parables, like if somebody was trying to like evict the woman or something, like, oh, she lost her coin. Now she can't pay taxes or whatever. I'm going to get her out of here. And they'd be upset that she found it. Like what person would, would not want to celebrate with her? Yeah. And the third story, it hits you with that. And it's so jarring and weird. And I think I read that and I'm thinking, just go inside the house. He's yeah. back. Just go in there mm-hmm. and, and eat with him and celebrate. You're, you're, even if you disagree with like your brother's decisions, go celebrate with him. Yeah. And I think that's the point. Yeah. It's the father meant, invites him in and the, the passage says he was angry yeah. and he would not go in. He, he refused. would not go into the party. Yeah. And then he, and he, the first thing he does is he says, like, he wasted all the money on prostitutes. And now you're celebrating him? Yeah. So talk about that. That was the kind of the third question. Um, what areas of your life do you feel that you're in a state of faint? Well, yeah, the famine. Mm-hmm. And then how can your perspective on your situation point others to Jesus' goodness? But yeah, you did such a good job of creating empathy uh, for the for the lost son. Mm-hmm. So talk about talk about that aspect of it a little bit. Um we tend to get a little judgy of mm-hmm. of people who are lost, and that parable teaches us a different way. Yeah. So I was listening to a podcast, um, I think last week, it was uh, the newest Theology in the Raw podcast, yep. and Preston Sprinkle had a Sprinkle had a woman on who wrote a book, and I forgot the name of the book, but the whole book is looking at women in the Bible and how often we, um, we almost like... Uh, mischaracterize them. Is that a term? Is that a word? Mm -hmm. Mischaracterize? I feel like that needs to be something else, but we (laughs) mischaracterize them. And we assume immediately that like this person must have been a sex worker or this person must have been caught in all these like really horrible things when really there could be other explanations to their story. And the lady gave the example of the woman at the well. And he was saying that Jesus approaches her and has this conversation and says like, you know, yeah, you've had multiple husbands and the man you're living with right now isn't even your husband. And our thoughts, we go right to, oh, she's probably, you know, caught in all these horrible acts and she's been passed around from man to man to man. And the lady was like, well, a more accurate reading might be maybe her husband's died. Yeah, she's a widow many she's a times widow. over. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times we assume she's caught in all these like horrible acts of like whatever, but maybe she's just had like some really difficult relationships and maybe husbands died and those other husband died and... She's been passed around not because of something she did, but just because of the difficulties of their culture. Yeah. And the husband she's with now isn't even your husband. It's not necessarily like an act of infidelity, but it's an act of like desperation. She needs to eat mm-hmm. and she has to provide for herself. And maybe this other guy, he's simply there to help her out. So we read that story and we think like, oh, she's probably a bad person. But maybe she's just going through some extremely difficult situations. 
And it was such a really unique perspective yeah. to that story for me. Um, and I think we tend to do that a lot. We see somebody in a situation and we assume the worst yeah. without really knowing what their story actually is. Now, that's really good. And in the, in the parable, the older brother assumes or makes a statement that he wasted his money on prostitutes. Yeah. Um, that's never actually, I mean, it is a parable, so it's a made up story. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, but that was never mentioned. Mm -hmm. It says wild living. So we don't know what it was. I yeah. Mean, it could have been anything. It could have been anything, yeah. but the, there was an assumption that it's, you know, being squandered on prostitutes or whatever. Yeah. But like, even, even if it was prostitutes, like he completely overlooked the whole famine situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, I was going to say too, though, um, Take the woman at the well. Yeah. Um, even suppose it was. Mm -hmm. yeah, even if it is the worst. Even, even if it is the worst case scenario, God's heart for that person has not changed. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Right. So, yeah. like, we don't need to sanitize a story either, like right. the other side of that. Like, I think you're right. I think we read that and we, we assume the worst. Yeah. Uh, which may not necessarily be the case. But even if it is the worst, it doesn't change the fact that Jesus is engaged in right. this conversation mm -hmm. yeah, with a woman totally. who has totally been marginalized by, by society. Like that part of the story is 100% accurate. Yeah. And in the parable, um, this son who wasted his father's inheritance, he did do things that were an affront culturally. He demanded his inheritance mm -hmm. before his father passes. He does go and just blow his money with no regard for his family or you you did a, a brief mention of the honor shame oh yeah yeah uh, he would have definitely brought shame on his family so like he would have been written off as dead in that culture by his family so like even if you give him the best benefit of the doubt he's still a guy who brought shame on his family who did things that were culturally totally taboo and yet the father's Desperate for his return. Yeah, and ready to run out and meet him and show him yeah. compassion. Yeah. Um, something that they said in the podcast that really stayed with me, they said, Jesus did such a good job at both addressing sin, but also identifying with somebody's pain. Yes. Where, yeah, he didn't overlook sin, but at the same time, he was able to empathize with where somebody was. Yeah. Right. And the factors that brought them to this place. And it was never from a place of like, like undue judgment. It yeah. was compassion. Yeah. Like like the the woman that was yeah. caught in the act of adultery. He yeah. says, go and sin no more. That's like the last thing he says after yeah. he calls the mob off and says, get away from her. Yeah. Like, get out of here. And if you not sin, throw that stone, go for it. Yeah. But then like with that level of compassion, and then he addresses the sin issue. Yeah. So, um, I mean, talk about this just for, okay, like, okay, we're not in the shame on our, you know, culture mm -hmm. Things are way different today than they were back then. Um, but there's so much that is applicable in in that regard. Yeah. So, like, talk about how um, we can or we should be approaching people who are in sinful states and sinful situations and how our posture towards them ought to be like the father's posture was he's waiting for them to just turn mm -hmm. yeah right um so what are some ways that we can apply this idea of of creating empathy for someone that we even may disagree with incredibly strongly um and we may even see like what the what what they're engaged in is sinful and outside of what what Bible what the Bible would allow, and yet we can still have empathy towards who they are and where they are and how they got there. Yeah, I, I think it starts by getting close enough yeah. to to see who they are and to see their story, and for them to know you as well. Like the when the younger son left and wasted all the money and all that, the older brother stayed put. He didn't chase after him. Yeah. And there was distance in that relationship at that moment, right? Yep. Um, and I asked myself, like, like, what if he would have ran after him and said, like, you're my brother. I care about you. I love you. Mm -hmm. Like, this is not a good decision for you. Like, clearly that was not a good decision, right? Yeah. Man, this isn't good for you and it isn't good for us. And I think that relationship there could have been mended. And when he finally returns, he probably would have been more excited to celebrate with him. So I think there's like a closeness that has to happen in that. Mm. 
So we're not just assuming the worst about the person. If we're close enough to know what they're actually going through, then we can we can know how to help in a sense. Yeah. And I think it starts with like showing a level of compassion and love and support and walking alongside them through whatever that might be. But it that can't happen from a distance. Really yeah, um, we're also we're not the we're not the consequence enforcers either. I think that's the thing. Like the brother wanted his consequence, like he wanted the other brother to have consequences. Yeah. Which I get, but the thing is like what you were saying, it stuck with me. Like he should have just went in. Like if he just went into the party, even if he is mad, it's okay to be it's okay that he was upset. I mean, it it I would have been upset, like, man, what you just did to our family, all these things. But like, can you look past that and be like, there's gonna be some natural consequences for this for this son that just returned. Yeah, the money's gone. The money's yeah, gone. Right. You're you're probably gonna have to work the rest of your life because yep. it's not like dad's just gonna keep on handing out inheritance to right. you. <laughs> right. So it's like one, that's one what it's so frustrating about that. And I know it's just a parable story, but it's like if the brother could have understood that like it's not his role to give the consequences. Yeah. It's his role, one to help lead his family, to follow his father, and then ultimately to try to love this guy who's just went through a really rough time. Because it, they didn't, it never said that that kid lost his, the other brother didn't lose his inheritance. He still was like right. part of this family. Right. But in his choices, he potentially could have just because he didn't go in. Yeah. So good. I think like, yeah, it's the whole thing of like the consequences are going to, there's a, there's so many natural consequences that are just going to happen with this guy. But like, I don't want, there's plenty of things that I need to get consequences yeah. on. So yeah, I, don't know. I, I think a couple things on that. One is, um, not only, I, I think you, you're right, like not only does he show that he wasn't really close to his brother to begin with because mm-hmm. he wasn't he wasn't upset by his departure. Yeah. Um, but you mentioned he w- was in close proximity to his father, but he was a long way from the father's heart. Mm-hmm. So, um, and that's a picture of the religious people. I mean, that's why Jesus is telling the story. For, yeah for the religious people who are in the audience to, to reveal to them, as you said, uh, wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who am I in this story? Did you guys catch the reference? Yeah. The, um, so I quoted Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah. I'm the problem. It's me. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's great. I said it and I didn't know if anyone was going to catch it. And then a few people started laughing and then it spread. So maybe yeah. 10 people left. That's uh-huh. a pretty well, good joke. Yeah. Ten you, people. you had several good jokes. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I would have caught it, but I was in the spot. Do- dodging dodgeballs. Oh, that's good. <laughs> With all the kids. That sounds very fun. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. This... My girls got it. They yeah, loved that's it. Good. Yeah. yeah. So this this How brother is close to the, not close to, not close really to either of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. He's, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's relationally disconnected uh-huh. from, mm-hmm. yeah. he's not emotionally invested <laughs> yeah. at all in what's going on. Oh, that's, yeah. That's a really good point. So uh, just kind of interesting. And it reminds me a little bit. So he's resentful that, He's resentful that the brother is welcomed home. Mm-hmm. He's resentful. Well, you know, he never got a goat. <laughs> he's mad about yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, I want a goat for his me, friends my friends. never got a goat, yeah. you know, so he's upset about that. Um, he's resentful that everyone's happy at the return of the brother. And here he is. He never left. And people don't seem to be happy that yeah. they're taking him for granted. Mm-hmm. Um, which was a oh, reference baby. to the re- religious. <laughs> that's how religious. That's how religious people can be, right? So they're serving God, but they're doing it out of duty, not mm-hmm. out of delight. They're angry and resentful for any any celebration that doesn't re- involve them. It reminds me a little bit of the other uh, parable. I think Jesus told this parable. I'm pretty sure he did. Um, of the workers in the field. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. Right. So the one that comes mm-hmm. early, they give them a you know full day's wage, and then they come half day, gives them a yeah. full day's wage. Then the people that come for the last fifteen minutes, and they get a full day's yes. wage. Yeah. And the people who worked all day long are resentful of the people who got the mm-hmm. grace given to them at the end. Same same idea. Religious people are resent God's goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so I don't know if you have oh, any that, thoughts around that, but yeah. that, it just reminds me of that. And that parable, I think even more so, like we all relate to the whole family yeah. and somebody coming back, but that idea, I've been working all day, and yeah. this person that showed up with 15 minutes left yes. to go gets the yep. same amount of money I get. Yep. Yeah. I think that's that in all of our Americanism, that cries out is like, that is not it fair. Makes no sense. Yeah, <laughs> like why is this happening? Like I'm going to report to HR and find out what's going on here. Like yeah. this shouldn't happen. Yeah. But yeah, but when it comes to like the way that God sees things, that that's grace. And that's that idea of him not holding like a level of sin over our heads. But like we're all broken. We all need him. 
Yeah. So of course somebody shows up at the last minute. Let's yeah. celebrate that. Yeah. 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 That's that's so different. Well, and there's going to be a season when you are that first person to show up and do all the work all day, and then there's going to be a season where you're that last person to show up. Mm-hmm. So it's like, man, I want to be, I want to receive the grace both ways. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think I love what you mentioned, Jamie. The idea that the brother, the older brother, was distant from both relationships. Yeah. So when Jesus says, like, the most important commandments are to love God and love your neighbor, yep. like, there's a sense where if you're not loving your neighbor, then are you truly loving God? You're not. So if you're distant from the one person yep. who's far from God, like, how can you be close to God as well? Yep. And I think, yeah, I think that just made me realize, like, his whole, I've been with you, serving you, doing all these things, it was all kind of a show yeah, to try to do, earn, yeah, earn was, credit or he whatever. He was definitely on the earn path, yeah, yeah. the do mm-hmm. path. Yeah. yeah, no, that's really good. Um, and I think it, it goes back to, like, I guess what the how the parable started. Jesus is talking, or um, Luke is talking about the audience there, yep. and the religious people were upset that Jesus was eating with sinners. Yeah, with he was close to them, right? And he was sharing meals with them. He was living yep. life with them, and they didn't like that. Yeah. So that sense of so just the, being close. The end of the story, they realize that they're the older brother, and even worse, they realize that the notorious sinners and tax collectors mm-hmm. there are the heroes of the story. Yeah. yeah. And that's just too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? I would have loved to have seen like what their response was like. <laughs> yes. Did they just walk away angry or yes. did they try to punch somebody? Like what happened there? Yeah. <laughs> I think they actually, we actually know what they try to do. No, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That brings us to Easter. Brings us to Easter uh, so, this week. <laughs> so you told the story of D.L. Moody that was in the mm-hmm. book. And I'd heard that story before I read the book, but then I uh, got reacquainted with that story of D.L. Moody. Can you tell it again just for yeah. those who might have missed it. So D.L. Moody was a, a traveling pastor in the 1800s. And he... Um, in the Chicago area. Oh, and yeah. Moody Bible Institute is named after yeah. him. Yeah. yeah. So um, hugely popular and very effective in what he did. Um, tons of people came to know Jesus because of what he did. And he wasn't really charismatic and he didn't have a, like a lot of revolutionary systems to do that. He simply prayed a lot. And he attributes all of that to prayer, which is amazing, right? Yeah. Like in his mind, it wasn't about like necessarily like the methods and the systems and doing all this to make it look good. He just prayed for the people that were far from God and they came to know Jesus because of his willingness to be like a a utensil for God to use. So he carried around a list of 100 names of close friends and family who were far from God and he prayed for them every single day. And it says that he prayed. And I love the way that Tyler wrote it in the book. Um, He said he prayed that God's love would be so like evident in their lives that they couldn't do anything but turn to him. Yeah. So that God would show up in such a way. And he didn't specify how that looked. It was simply God show up in their life. Use a person, Mm -hmm. um, use a dream, use something they're going through. Just God speak to them in the way that you need to. And um, 96 people came to know Jesus on that list by the time that he passed away. Yeah. Which is remarkable. 96% success. 96%. Yeah. Yeah, It's pretty Um, incredible. And since they were like friends, like the people on the list were not just random strangers. They were people he knew and they knew him. At his funeral, the last four people showed up and they placed their faith in Jesus because the reception and the ceremony was so moving. And um, it doesn't really say why, but I would assume it's like somebody probably shared that story. Like he's been praying for you his whole life. Yeah. Yeah. And they were so moved by that. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing this. Sounds like an evangelist story. Yeah, yeah it does, doesn't yeah, it? it does. Yeah, and it's then incredible. they say, like, "Oh man, I'm gonna go." Do I this surrender all work. was definitely played. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, probably on the hundred. <laughs> the last yeah. guy's like, "All right, all right." All right. <laughs> Have you heard my 100 person list story? <laughs> but it is. It's one of those stories that almost sounds larger than life. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think it is motivational in a sense. Oh, for like, sure. I, I don't have a list of 100 names, but I do have like a dozen that I can pray for. I can do that. So, yeah, th- that's what I was going to say. That kind of that story brings out a couple of things to mm-hmm. me. One is just the persistence of prayer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, I don't know what you, like there's there's a mystery. You know, prayer is mm-hmm. this big mystery. I mean, here we are. We're done with our prayer series. I don't know anything else about prayer. I feel like I've learned a few Nothing things, new. but it's still there's so much to it that is just so hard to to understand. And one of those is that mystery of persistent prayer. Like mm-hmm. we're told, if we keep on knocking, keep on seeking, you know, the doors open, you'll find what you're looking for. And yet, we all know people, and we probably all have things that we've persistently prayed for right. that that we haven't seen anything. Yeah happen 
And, you know, I'll, I'll often tell people, you know, like, if you're shaken by that, then your faith is in your prescription to how prayer is supposed to come out more than it is in God. Like, if there's mm-hmm. something you're praying for that's not happening and your faith is shaken, then your faith was not in God. Your faith is in things going your way, yeah. uh, which is a terrible place to be. Yeah. Um, but there is something to persistence in prayer, and sometimes... God does respond to mm-hmm. to that in some incredible way. But then the last piece is, um, do we all have names to put on a list, mm-hmm. people that God loves who are far from him that we're called to invest in, mm-hmm. that we're called to pray for? Yeah. And so you shared your... Um, your takeaway from the D.L. Moody story. You want to share that again? Yeah. So when I read that book, I really was like challenged by it because I realized I I don't carry a list around like that. And there are people in my life that I just don't think about on a regular basis. So I started thinking about it and I started trying to make a list of like friends and family, neighbors that I know, or some that I know and some that I'm just not sure of, like their relationship with Jesus. And I realized like I'm thinking of family members that I haven't talked to in years. Mm. And it's because they're just not on my mind because you get busy and then I have my family stuff and work is, is busy and all these things are happening. And if it's not on my mind, then I'm not praying for them. And if I'm not praying for them, then I'm not looking for opportunities to be that example of Jesus really. And what I realized is that when I, when I processed it and wrote their names down, they were not just on my mind for prayer, but now, now like, there are going going to be opportunities where I can be that example. Yeah, it's like with the the older brother, he was distant from his younger brother, and he was probably upset, and probably days where he wasn't thinking about him at all. Like you can assume that, right? Right. If it would have been different, if he would have had compassion and praying for him, he might have chased after him. He might have had that better relationship. He might have been able to help him way sooner than even hit the famine. Um, but I think it's that connection. If it's somebody's on your mind and you're compassionate for them, it's prayer, but it's also this this connection that I'm able to be that example of Jesus as well. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's that. It's just making me mindful. There are people that are close to me who are probably far from Jesus, and what can I do to not persuade them, but to be that example? Yeah. Um, and I really think the last four people in Moody's list, it wasn't because he had a convincing argument. It's because they knew him. Yeah. And they knew he was a man of faith and he cared about him. And I'm sure that that was convincing enough. Like this guy loves Jesus and he actually loves me. I'm going to give this thing a shot and see what's yeah. up. Yeah. And I think that's probably what happens. Yeah. So good. I think uh, focusing your prayers focuses your attention. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah. you, and then you start moving towards those things that you're praying for. I think that's just how, how that works. So that's really good. Um, which brings us to, the 24 hour yeah. prayer event. Yeah. So talk about that. Oh, it's going to be amazing. So this Thursday we have. Has a, anyone signed up? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have lots of yeah. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm assuming, yeah, because like yeah. I think we have. I mean, I signed up. I don't know if we have every hour slotted yet. I think that would be think, cool to check out. I think things, every but hour but has somebody. Yeah, that's really be. cool. Joey was running a report today, okay. this morning. So, right. Well, that's good. Yes, people yeah. have signed up. Yeah, yeah. that's yes. amazing. So you have an entire day that's dedicated to prayer. Yeah. Um, and it's really cool to know that at, at any given time on that Thursday, this coming Thursday, yeah. yep. somebody will be praying for something. Um, and someone and someone yeah how cool is that yeah and we have like and you don't have to just be intimidated by it like there's a whole jeremy he's done a great job creating and the prayer team yep um just like a walk through yep. for the hour so that you yeah, can do four that stations jamie preached about through. it last week yeah yep. so it's good uh, so the hour should flow relatively quickly yeah. Yeah. i think and uh yeah if you haven't already signed up you can go to the events tab in the believers yep. church app and you can get yourself signed up um, and I would encourage you to do that with someone. It's easier to do that with someone. Mm-hmm. So whether that's your B group or your impact team, uh, find someone that you can sign up with. And then that leads us into Good Friday yep. at 7. So, Sam, you want to talk about yeah, that? Yeah, so we're doing a night of prayer and healing, which is going to be pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. We've got a bunch of music just to kind of be part of the backdrop for for all of that. So um, bring your family. It's Family friendly. Yep. It'll be yeah. all that stuff. It's about an hour. We'll be celebrating um, communion. Yeah. Communion we'll have also. communion together yep. as well. So just, um, I really, obviously, Good Friday like carries a lot of things. Um, but as far as like the weekend goes, like Good Friday, I just 
you just don't skip Good Friday. Right. Yeah. Like I, I just we say that every single year, but yep. especially us, I have a tendency to do that because we look at Easter and yep. usually there's more numbers on Easter. So sometimes you just overlook Good Friday. Um, but there's something about just spending some time reflecting on what actually happened that night and yeah. and, and all of the things. So Yeah. It's don't miss so it. Good. Yeah. Very good. And then uh next Sunday, Easter, normal service times. Yep. Um got any plans with family? We're um, doing stuff afterwards? on Saturday. It's okay. just a little easier with okay. everything. Yeah, we've so got Sunday afternoon some... dinner with some friends. Yeah, yeah. good. Yeah, same. We have family on Saturday and then family after church on that Sunday, too. Yeah. So Awesome. Yeah. The series is going to be really exciting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So let's I'm talk super about that just excited. Uh, a little I'm bit. I'm so excited Yeah. So the it. series that we're starting on Easter Sunday is called Made for This. And the, the whole idea is um, there was a time uh, where God put in motion his creation and everything was as it was intended to be. It didn't last long, um, <laughs> but yeah. in the but oh, for a moment, <laughs> yeah, but for a moment, everything functioned the way it was supposed to. And Adam and Eve are in the Garden of Eden, and they have perfect communion with God, and they've been tasked with responsibilities and work, and work goes the way it's supposed to, and just everything is functioning at its optimum. And then the the fall comes, and everything gets broken, and you know, by chapter three of Genesis, everything's <laughs> unwinding, you know, and by chapter five, God regrets that he even made us, you know, right. and so you have all this stuff that's going on. Um, but then the story of Easter in part is the story of a new beginning and, and the culmination of the story of Jesus is the establishment of the kingdom and the establishment of the kingdom is really at its core, a uh, return to the garden, right? yes. a, a return to the way things were intended to be. That And that's what this series is about. This series is called Made for This. Um, and the idea is like, what, what was God's original plan for us? And how can we be kingdom bearers to be a part of bringing that to bear? Because that is part of our responsibility as we're going to look at on Easter and following uh, so yeah, it should be a yeah. lot of fun. It's yep. a the the first message um, is um, yeah. It's it includes most of the Easter story. Yeah. So if you're a <laughs> yes. traditionalist, you're not going to be disappointed. <laughs> but it does take a slightly different tact. Yes. On it, and I, I hope it's engaging. And I'm telling you, bring bring friends, bring family uh, out on Easter. It it will. It will challenge some of our, yeah. our thinking, I believe. That's my hope anyway. And, um, yeah, here's hoping that that Jesus just shows up big. and um, Many I'll, people come to know him. Many yeah. co- people yes. come to know him. And many who do know him become um, convinced that there's way more, yes. that they're missing out on a lot of what God has mm-hmm. in store for them through the resurrection. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just a day to... Uh, I mean, I'm I am going to eat some jelly beans, but it's not just to eat jelly beans uh, or to show up at, at church, you know, and then go on with life. It's way more than that. So, super excited for that. Yeah, that's cool. Gonna be yeah, the sweet tart jelly beans. Um, they're I, really good. I've had the Starburst jelly. Okay, beans. yeah, those, those are great too. Really yeah, good. yeah. Have yeah. you guys had the uh, jelly beans that like <laughs> it's a game where one is a good flavor and one's a nasty flavor? Yeah, that's, I would never play. That What's game. it called? The it's um, bamboozled. Yeah. 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 Have you guys heard of this? No, yeah. but that no, sounds but like that sounds it is amazing. amazing. It sounds like something you would so do. Something so like, they'd be like two. One cotton candy, like the yellow ones. One's popcorn and one's rotten eggs. Yeah. And you got to determine like which one it is. That's terrible. So much of kids are always like, "Here, try this one, Dad." I'm like, "No." I know it's going to bring it to me. I know it's no good. And with that, that's all we really have time for. (laughs) Uh, We could have ended right right after Easter, but no, we had to bring up the Jelly Bean Challenge. (laughs) We'll see you at 9 or 1045 or at 1 o'clock on our YouTube channel. Thanks for being here, friends. Yeah, or Thursday and Friday. And be love. Yep.